let's start with a southern Italian version of a crostini, and that's really gonna set our taste buds going for this European tour. So let's make the pesto first. When I first thought about making a pesto with jalapenos, I thought to myself, you know what, this is gonna be way too spicy. I like to use chili peppers for accent, not for injury. And so what I did first was actually roast the jalapenos. We got a little char on the outside. It kind of melts out the spice a little bit. I took the stems off and the seeds out. So all I have is really just the flesh of the chilies. And I left the skin on because we're gonna puree it anyway. And I want some of that charred flavor from the skin. And then I'm gonna take a whole bunch of parsley leaves, some uh, Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, just like a regular pesto, except uh, instead of basil, we're using the jalapenos and some parsley. I love the creamy texture of uh, pine nuts when they're pureed. Adds good texture to this. Crunchy and creamy. Some salt and pepper. And uh, of course, some garlic. So we're just gonna crush the garlic out of its skin. Okay, so we have all those ingredients in there. We have one last ingredient to add, which is the olive oil and then slowly add the olive oil. So it emulsifies really nicely. So we have our pesto done. You can make that ahead of time, get that out of the way. Okay, here's the soppressata. It's like a uh, sort of a dry salami with some spice in it. We're gonna mix it with some onions and, uh, and then fold in some, uh, some scrambled eggs, put that on the crostini with the jalapeno pesto on top. I mean, soppressata is, is something that you're gonna find mostly in the south of Italy. Nice spicy flavor, very bold flavors there. I love that kind of gutsy cuisine that you'll find in the South. All right, so we're gonna let that begin to saute. And uh, let's use a red onion. Why not? I'm gonna dice some, some onion here. So we'll have the soppressata, some red onion. Then we're gonna scramble some eggs. You can see how this is all starting to come together, right? We're gonna have that crusty ciabatta bread with the olive oil. I'll cut it into individual crostini. And, um, and then on top, we'll have the scrambled eggs, very lightly scrambled with the um, soppressata and the red onions running through it. A little provolone cheese, maybe some fresh herbs. And I'm gonna top it off with, don't forget it, our jalapeno pesto. It's gonna remind you of being in Southern Italy, but it's still a brunch. We're gonna pour some, uh, some scrambled eggs right into the soppressata and the onions. Love that. And we have our jalapeno pesto ready to go. We have the ciabatta bread. It's gorgeous. Nice and crusty, exactly what we want. And I'm actually gonna take this off and I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut the ends off here and I'm just gonna make individual portions. All right, Let's scramble these eggs. Mmm, smells really good. I'm gonna take a little bit of the provolone. That will make it even creamier. So we'll melt the provolone in there, and then we're done. Okay. I'm gonna put the scrambled eggs right on top of the ciabatta, the crostini. I'm gonna take a little bit of our jalapeno pesto. Just a little bit, don't forget, this is gonna have tons of flavor in it. A little bit of fresh Italian parsley. Gives us some freshness. This is the quality control time of the day. We're actually gonna start by making our Denver-style omelet frittata. Okay, what's the difference between an omelet and a frittata? Well, an omelet, I think about making in a pan and then folding it over and putting it on the plate. A frittata, we're gonna put it into a cast iron pan and bake it in the oven. And uh, one of the tricks I, I like to do is actually put the cast iron pans in the oven first. We're gonna do that right now in a 400 degree oven so they're nice and hot so you get a little bit of that crispiness around the edges. I'm gonna start by making our poblano relish. All right, we're gonna dice an onion and crush some garlic. So some canola oil. And then the onions. So while the onions are cooking, we can start the garlic. A little bit of salt. The abrasiveness of the salt helps to crush the garlic. We're gonna sweat our garlic with our onions. So they get nice and soft. All right, so poblano pepper. I like to say it's a good starter chili because it has heat, but it's not overbearing. And what I like to do is to char it. You can do it on top of the stove where you can actually roast them in the oven. And then what happens is the skin just kind of comes right off, just like that. But this is real, lots of the flavor for our, our frittata is gonna come from. 
So I'm just gonna add the peppers to our onions and garlic. It smells so good. All right, couple more ingredients. Squeeze the lime for some acidity. And then some cilantro. You want a little fresh herbage in there for sure. Just kind of wakes it up, keeps it nice and fresh. A little salt and pepper in our relish. Maybe a splash of oil. The fun never stops. All right, let's get the ham going. And I'm just gonna start with a tiny bit of oil just to kind of get it going. Pepper. I'm not gonna add too much salt right now because a ham is cured with salt. If we need a little salt later, we can always add it. Let's get some eggs going. I'm just gonna do the whole dozen. A little bit of salt and pepper. It smells good in here, folks. Okay, three cheeses. So let's just grate a little bit of the, uh, the Monterey. I mean, you'll see in a uh, Western or a Denver omelet, you'll see cheddar cheese and Monterey Jack sometimes. So this is really classic. The Parmigiano is probably not so classic, but just gives it a little extra saltiness. It just wakes it up a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna put a little bit of the relish in here as well. And we'll put the ham right to the eggs as well. Okay. Let's grab our cast iron. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of butter in the bottom of the cast iron. The butter's gonna melt. It's gonna get a little bit puffy, so we don't wanna fill it up too much. Basically about three quarters of the way. And then I'm adding a little bit of the Parmigiano Reggiano on top. It's just gonna get golden brown and give it a little bit of texture. And then we're gonna put these in the oven, 400 degrees, and they're gonna cook for about 10 or 12 minutes. And we'll have some mini Denver frittata slash omelets. And while those are cooking, we'll get our croutons going. This is a good quality white bread. And I'm just gonna take the crust off and I'm just gonna pull some croutons. I think they look cooler and also you get like lots of crispy edges and it's gonna have all that ham flavor. So we're gonna put our croutons in here. We're just gonna let them get golden in the ham fat. A little salt and pepper. You can see they're starting to get nice and brown already. Beautiful. Because we buttered the pan first, these should come out, you know, fairly easy. And we're gonna put it right on the plate. It should come right out. There it goes. That's beautiful. And then we're gonna take a little more of our relish and garnish it. This is a little bit more, I would say, fancy, a little more elegant. All right, let's give it a taste. See, that's what you're looking for. Nice and custardy and tender on the inside, crusty and brown on the outside, a little bit of crouton. Really, so much flavor packed in to that one little frittata. If you tasted the relish on its own, probably a little spicy for most people. Now, it's got the perfect balance. I mean, one of the nice things about the croutons is it gives it a little bit of crunchiness. It's like having eggs and toast. It's fantastic. All right, so uh, let's move on to our, uh, our omelet. We have some chorizo, we have our uh, Monterey Jack cheese, we have our eggs, of course. I'm actually gonna put the chilies in with the chorizo, why not? You know, one of the things about jalapenos is sometimes they're hot, and sometimes they're not as hot, you know, it's just one of those things, so it's important to kind of give them a taste and let you know, you know how spicy they are. So we're just gonna cook those just a little bit. They don't have to be cooked very well. And then uh, maybe some fresh cilantro. Coarsely chop. Then we have our flour tortillas. So we're gonna wrap our omelet to go. It's basically an edible wrapper for your omelet. It's kind of a cool idea. Thanks for telling me about the muffins. These are good. I'm gonna let these cool, and they'll actually keep cooking a little bit, you know, until they're stone cold. So uh, now we can actually start making our omelet. Put a little bit of unsalted butter for our omelet. Start with our, our eggs, of course. Just about a ladle full. And then uh, some salt and pepper. 
You want to get the, uh, the eggs to set. So all the eggs kind of cook on the side of the pan like that. Then it's going to take some chorizo. A little bit of chorizo and right down the center. Some of the chilies. Some Monterey Jack cheese. Some cilantro. And get it set like this. Just flip our omelet over. If you want to get it even more sort of perfect, this is sort of a, a restaurant trick. You just kind of put a towel over it, just squeeze it like that. So obviously you can serve your omelet just like that, but if you want to take it on the go, we can actually wrap it in a uh, in an edible wrapper or a tortilla. And I put it on top of the stove here just to kind of get it a little bit pliable, a tiny bit warm. Just takes a couple seconds. All right, we take our, our omelet. Just fold it around. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of wax paper. Fold it in the wax paper and we can cut it. Where you can take it on the go. Mm. That's really satisfying, and it's the chorizo that makes it. You know, that spicy pork sausage with the, uh, the spicy jalapenos. Eggs Benedict with apple sausage. I'm gonna grate some onions and the apple, and I'm gonna add a little garlic, and we're gonna saute that for our sausage. You know, we wanna get a lot of flavor into our ground pork. So I'm gonna saute these vegetables in a little bit of canola oil. You know, while we're at it, we'll just We'll give the apples a little cook, too. But it's really easy to make your own breakfast sausage. You just take your ground pork and just season it. A little bit of cayenne, some salt and pepper, some sage, some fresh thyme. And then I can take my onions, garlic, and apple, a little bit of maple syrup. I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator, let all these flavors kind of get together. I'm gonna take three eggs, three egg yolks. I like to cook my eggs right on top of the stove in a metal bowl. Obviously, they're gonna get nice and light. We wanna create a ribbon when we do that so that it all stays together. Now, I'm gonna take some clarified butter. We're gonna slowly add to the cooked egg yolks so that they emulsify. If you add it too quickly, it's gonna separate and really you're gonna have to start over. Add a little bit of lemon juice, a little hot sauce, some Dijon mustard and some whole grain mustard for a little bit of texture. The mustard is also gonna thicken the hollandaise up a little bit. A little salt and pepper. We're gonna make our patties. These are probably gonna take about three minutes on one side and a couple minutes on the other. Let's get the English muffins in the toaster and then we'll talk about the poached eggs. You have some water that's steaming and then you take some distilled vinegar and that's gonna actually help the poached eggs coagulate. Just gonna use a little ramekin. Just in case I break the egg, I'm not gonna have to fish it out of the water. I'm gonna take a couple of English muffins, some of our pork and apple sausage right on top. And I'm gonna take a couple of eggs, our beautiful poached eggs, and then some hollandaise sauce. Put a little bit right on top. A tortilla omelet burrito with pulled chicken and some salsa verde. Salsa verde, translation, green sauce. Tomatillos in the gooseberry family, they're, they look like green tomatoes. In fact, they're not, but you can utilize them that way. All right, just quarter the tomatillos. And this is a sauce that you should just know how to make. You can make a fantastic green salsa that you can serve with like chips, for instance. And I start by making this sauce just like this. So this is a good recipe for you to have, period. Um, if you wanna get this recipe, just go to foodnetwork.com slash brunch and whatever we're cooking today, it will be there. We have some jalapenos and uh, some red onion. We're just gonna chop these up coarsely. And then a couple of cloves of garlic. We're gonna put all this on a sheet pan with a little bit of canola oil, and we're just gonna let them roast. And then when everything gets nice and soft, we can actually blend it all together. We'll put some cilantro in there, we'll season it up, and we'll have a beautiful salsa verde. A little bit of canola oil. Season it up. Let's get it in the oven. 375, 400 degrees. Probably will take about 20, 25 minutes maximum. All 
All right. Tomatillos, onions, garlic, and jalapenos. And they're nice and soft and roasted. It didn't take very long at all, maybe about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. We're gonna put this right into a food processor. Gonna put a little bit of honey in here. Why the honey? You have the spiciness from the chilies and you have the tartness from the tomatillos, so you wanna balance that out. We're gonna put a little bit of acidity with this fresh lime juice. Totally puree it. Okay. It's really pale. It's actually not a very pretty color. And we wanna make this green. Now the way to do that is obviously put something green into it to really kind of bring it out. And something fresh, so cilantro works really nicely. Now the thing about it is that this is still, still warm and we're gonna actually heat this up with the chicken. And this is chicken that it's like store-bought rotisserie chicken. And we're just gonna cook the chicken in the sauce first. And at the very end, we'll add a bunch of fresh herbs so it really kind of pumps with the green. If you put it in when it's warm, it's just gonna turn gray anyway. So we're gonna take a little canola oil. I want my chicken to be pulled, but I want it to be in big pieces. It kind of drives me crazy when it's so shredded that it has no texture. You find that with pork a lot. Texture is so important. A little salt and pepper. We can pour our sauce over this. Just slow down the heat. The chicken's already cooked, right? So we don't, we don't wanna overcook it and we don't need to cook it for that long, but I just want the sauce and the chicken to really get to know each other for a minute. And we're gonna make some chicken cracklings or fried chicken skin. And this will give that sort of nice crunchiness to the burrito. And you already have the ingredient. It's like, it's like a free thing. Skin comes with the chicken. Put some canola oil in here, let it heat up. While we're waiting for the oil to heat up, let's crack some eggs. So I, I said before, we were making a tortilla omelet burrito. So basically what we're gonna do is Crack some eggs. So we're just gonna whisk this up. A little bit of hot sauce. This of course is optional. And we're just gonna pour this right into the... And this way, when we're ready to go, we'll just take one of our tortillas and dredge it into the egg on both sides and then cook it right in the pan. All right, I think our chicken skin is ready. There we go. And you just want to crisp up the skin. Chicken cracklings. Anything crispy and crackling is all good for me. All right, so they really take like 20 seconds. I'm gonna let them drain on a paper towel and we'll just keep cooking more of these. First thing I'm gonna do is finish up our chicken by adding a bunch of fresh cilantro to it. And this is actually gonna freshen up the color for sure, but also the, the flavor. Little squeeze of fresh lime. So now, let's make our tortillas. So we have our eggs with a little bit of hot sauce and some salt and pepper. Dip it into the egg, see what happens. Flip it over. A little crusty on the outside. Puffing up a little bit. I'm gonna start by putting a little chicken in here. I love rotisserie chicken because you just take it home and then you can make a chicken dish in, you know, in a split. Some of the cheese. We have some Monterey Jack and some white cheddar. They both melt very well. The cheddar's gonna have a little bit more of a bite to it. Squeeze the lime. And don't forget our chicken cracklings. This is gonna give the burrito a little bit of crunch on the inside. And a little bit of crunch is always a good thing. Fold on both sides. Fold over the filling. It's pretty cool. Let's do one more. Fold it up. Couple of limes to go on the plate. A little fresh cilantro. Maybe a little creme fraiche on top. Give it a taste.
Mm, that's so good. The egg on the tortilla is a really cool idea. I mean, I love the flavor of eggs on basically anything, so especially for brunch. The chicken with the salsa verde and those cracklings, that makes all the difference, because otherwise it's all one texture. 